Hey, good morning. Good morning. Uh, turn your Bible to Romans chapter 9. Romans chapter 9. And I know it's been a couple weeks because of our schedule and, and different things. And I've uh, God led on my heart to preach on the judgment seat of Christ. And I'm not done preaching on that either. And I don't think I'm ever going to be done preaching on that uh, to myself, if nobody else. Amen. Um, we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. But that's not what we're going to do this morning. This morning, or we will this morning, but in the in Sunday school, uh, in the Sunday school hour, as they say, uh, Romans chapter 9, and we're going to talk, we're going to try to get through the end of this chapter. And um, we're going to read verses 25 through 33, and then we'll open in a word of prayer. As he saith also in Osi, that's Hosea, I will call them my people, which were not my people, and her beloved, which was not beloved. By the way, whenever he says, as he saith also in Osi, that's an indication he wants you to know where the verse is found, so you can go check it. Amen. And find out what the context is and everything else uh, that's going on there. All right, verse 26. And it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, Ye are not my people, there shall they be called the children of the living God. Isaiah also crieth concerning Israel, same thing with Isaiah. Though the number of the children of Israel be as the sand of the sea, a remnant shall be saved. For he will finish the work and cut it short in righteousness, because a short work will the Lord make upon the earth. And as Isaiah said before, except the Lord of Sabbath had left us a seed, we had been as Sodom and been made like unto Gomorrah. What shall we say then, that the Gentiles, which followed not after righteousness, have attained to righteousness, even the righteousness which is of faith? But Israel, which followed after the law of righteousness, hath not attained to the law of righteousness, Wherefore, because they sought it not by faith, but as it were by the works of the law, for they stumble at that stumbling stone. As it is written, Behold, I lay in Zion a stumbling stone and rock of offense. Which, by the way, is Jesus Christ, not uh, the church, and not Peter. And whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. Dear God, uh, we thank you so much for your many blessings. I thank you for Jesus Christ and the precious blood that he shed for our sins. I thank you for your perfect words. I thank you for family and friends and fellowship and the preaching of the word of God. And I pray to your God that you fill me with your spirit, that you help me to uh, make sure my calling, Lord, and, uh, and preach uh, the gospel of Jesus Christ and the word of God and the whole counsel of God. Lord, to uh, all those who you'd have me to preach it to. And Lord, I leave those things in your hands, and I trust you, and I pray that you just help me to obey. And be with us this morning. Help the mess, fill me with your spirit. Let the words be your words and not mine. And uh, help me to preach it right. And Lord, uh, pray for all the needs. Lord, of, Cal- of things that are happening in California, Lord, I pray for mercy and grace and that you give everyone involved a heart uh, to do right, to be restored and to restore, to love and to forgive, as you said, um, but in the manner in which you say and according to your words. And I pray that you help us, Lord, to, to take heed lest we fall. Amen. <laughs> And to uh, have a good and safe uh, vacation in the next couple days. Help me on my new job. And I pray for all those that are listening to the message, that you work in their hearts, that you give them a ready mind and a heart to know your words, to believe your words, to follow and obey your words, and to put these words into action in the way that they live their lives. Uh, be with us this morning. It's in Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Hosea or Isaiah? Oh, both. In verse 25, it's O.C., which is Hosea. And in verse 27, it's Isaiah, which is Isaiah. So there's two books that are being quoted uh, in these verses, in those two verses. And then um, 
It's Isaiah is being quoted in verse 33. Also Psalms. The Psalms. Um, Alright, so Romans chapter 9. And I want you to notice, first of all, uh, just by way of review, that the theme of this chapter, uh, and really the next three chapters, but this chapter especially, is who exactly are the true seed of Abraham. And uh, because we find out in verses 1 through 4, 1 through 5, that all these things that we have in Christ, the adoption, the glory, the covenants, um, they pertain to Israel after the flesh. Uh, verse 5, whose are the fathers, and of whom as concerned the flesh Christ came, who is over all, God bless forever, amen. So even though the, per- the adoption pertains to Israel, that don't mean they have it, or they have received it yet. And uh, they're not called sons in the same way that we are uh, in John one twelve. But as many as believe, uh, blah, but as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. And that is to say, the name of Jesus Christ. There is no other name uh, under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. And so. We find out in verse 6 that there are two Israels. There's the Israel, uh, with this phrase, for they are not all Israel, which are of Israel. So there's Israel after the flesh, which is everybody who's born of the seed of Abraham. Uh, But specifically, through the line of Isaac and Jacob. And Isaac shall I see be called, verse 7. Uh, so just because you're uh, a descendant of Abraham after the flesh, that don't make you a child of God, because in Isaac shall I see be called. But then more than that, verse 8, uh, they which are the children of the flesh, which includes those in the line of Isaac and Jacob, these are not the children of God, but the children of the promise are counted for the seed. See? So, tr- so there's an Israel which is of God, which are physical... Jews after the flesh which have believed on Christ and uh, there is included in the children of God Gentiles who have believed on Christ look at verse 24 even us whom he hath called not of the Jews only but also of the Gentiles see also our Romans chapter 4 the theme of which is Abraham being a spiritual father to Jews and Gentiles who have believed on him uh, verse, uh, let's see, 12, And the Father of circumcision, to them who are not of the circumcision only, but who also walk in the steps of that faith of our father Abraham, which he had, being yet uncircumcised. For the promise that he should be the heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. See? Um, so we're going to talk this morning a little bit too about the righteousness which is of faith. And what it means to be a child of Abraham by promise, not after the flesh. Uh, but we're still talking about the children of Israel after the flesh, because that's how the chapter started, and that's the first five verses of the chapter. Uh, I say the truth in Christ, I lie not, my conscience also bear me witness in the Holy Ghost, that I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart, for I could wish that myself were accursed from Christ for my kinsmen according to the flesh, he said, who are Israelites and to whom pertain all these things, specifically the adoption. And, um, all right, look at verse, so we're still talking about children of Israel after the flesh, and all these groups have been identified, the, um, the Jew, the Gentile, and the Church of God. And the Church of God uh, is the children of promise in verse 8 which includes both Jews after the flesh and Gentiles after the flesh. And in Christ, there's neither Jew nor Gentile, for all are one in Christ Jesus. But there's still a national identity, uh, either Jew or Gentile. There's still a, after the flesh, there's Jew or Gentile, even though after the Spirit and by promise, uh, they're, they're, that is done away with in Christ. Alright, now look down in verse... So that was just by way of review. Look down at verse 25 now. As he saith also in Osi, that's Hosea, I will call them my people, which were not my people, and her beloved, which was not beloved. 
Now, every egotistical, uh, high-minded, conceited, uh, full of pride, uh, lording it over themselves, Gentile, always thinks that this applies to himself because he's always looking for a way for him to be the subject of every sentence. He wants to be the guy getting the reward. He wants to be the guy uh, accomplishing the task. He wants to be the guy on the top of the mountain. He wants to be the one, the guy, the man of the hour. And, uh, and you should watch that, Gentile. I told you when we started chapter 9 that we're going to be talking about somebody else for these next three chapters besides you. And though you are included in the discussion, you're not the focus or the intent of the discussion. We're talking about Israel, uh, both children of the promise who are counted for the seed, and also Israel after the flesh. And I want you to notice here in verse 25, he's talking about Israel after the flesh. And he says, As he saith also in Osi, I will call them my people which were not my people, and her beloved which was not beloved. Alright, now, turn in your Bible, if you will, um, to Hosea chapter 2. As he saith also in Osi. So when you see, uh, as he saith also in Osi, or I saith also cried concerning Israel, then you should go back and look and see what exactly was said. Because even though it's quoted, a portion of the text is quoted here in verse 25, there's more involved in that text than what he quotes. He's quoting a portion of the text to make a point that he's making, which is that Israel will be restored and that they were not his people, but they will be again. Alright, uh, Hosea, that's Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Daniel, Hosea, Joel, Amos. So the first of the minor prophets. How you got, uh, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel, Daniel. So that's five, what they call major prophets. Um, and then Hosea is the first of what they call the minor prophets. Which that doesn't mean one is more important than the other, it just means the books are longer. Alright, Hosea chapter 2, and look down in verse, uh, let's see, 21. And it shall come to pass in that day, I will hear, saith the Lord, I will hear the heavens, and they shall hear the earth, and the earth shall hear the corn, and the wine, and the oil, and they shall hear Jezreel. And I will sow unto her, I will sow her unto me in the earth, and I will have mercy upon her that have not obtained mercy. And I will say to them which were not my people, Thou art my people, and they shall say, Thou art my God. Now that is Israel. Say, how do you know? All right, look back in verse uh, uh, chapter one, and look down in verse uh, four. And the Lord said unto him, Call his name Jezreel, for yet a little while, and I will avenge the blood of Jezreel upon the house of Jehu, and will cause to cease the kingdom of the house of Israel. And it shall come to pass at that day, that I will break the bow of Israel in the valley of Jezreel. Um, and then, just a way of context, Hosea was told to go marry this hooker, uh, whose name was Gomer, in verse 3. I mean, really. God called this prophet, he said, go, he said in verse uh, 2, And the Lord said to Hosea, Go take unto thee a wife of whoredoms, and children of whoredoms, for the land hath committed great whoredom, departing from the Lord. So God told Hosea to go marry this prostitute, and have children of her, and then God pronounced judgment on his wife and his, and the children, as a pattern and an illustration of what he would do to Israel, who was his wife. Uh, look down in verse six, and she can. And so this, or look in verse uh, five, rather. Uh, came to pat, uh, daughter Diblaim and son Jezreel. They had uh, verse four. And uh, verse five, and it shall come to pass at that day that I will break the bow of Israel in the valley of Jezreel, and 
She conceived again and bare a daughter, and God said unto him, Call her name Loruhama, for I will no more have mercy upon the house of Israel, but I will take them utterly away. Utterly take them away. So Lohurama or Loruhama, um, without going to the Hebrew or the Greek, just means no mercy. And so he named his child no mercy uh, because of the end of the verse, I will no more have mercy upon the house of Israel, but I will utterly take them away. But are you getting the idea of how God worked with prophets in the Old Testament? And, and, uh, and how everything isn't just sunshine happiness all the time? God showed his will through the life of this man Hosea. As he uh, interceded to Israel, he tried to fill the gap uh, between God and man. He preached to Israel for God to try to restore them. Or not. Look at verse 7. But I will have mercy upon the house of Judah. So there's two things. The kingdom of Israel, he says, he'll utterly take away. But uh, the house of Judah he'll have mercy on. So two kingdoms. And will save them by the Lord their God. And will not save them by bow, or by sword, nor by battle, by horses, nor by horsemen. Now that's a good verse for the NRA. You go ahead and hide all the guns you want in the basement of your house. That ain't going to save you. Only the Lord will save you. Especially in this day. Now when she had weaned Loruhama, she conceived and bare a son, and said, God, call his name Loami, for ye are not my people, and I will not be your God. See? Yet the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea, which cannot be measured nor numbered, and it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, Ye are not my people, which he just said uh, in verse 9, there it shall be said unto them, Ye are the sons of the living God. Then shall the children of Judah and the children of Israel be gathered together and appoint themselves one head and they shall come up out of the land for great shall be uh, the day of Jezreel. Which, by the way, is the name of this son of Hosea and this prostitute, Gomer, that he married. Uh, verse 4. And so God prom- God says, you are not my people. And in the same in the same a uh, group of verses, immediately after he says, I will, you're not my people and I will not be your God, he immediately predicts uh, that he will restore them. And that there will be a day coming where he says unto them, ye are the sons of God. And he says it in the same place where he told them, uh, you're not my people. All right. And uh, notice chapter 2, verse 2, Plead with your mother, plead, for she is not my wife, neither am I her husband. Let her therefore put away her whoredoms out of her sight, her adulteries from between her breasts. And uh, so, if you want to get hung up on divorce, and um, and whether, you know, bishop shall be the husband of one wife, well, I guess God is not qualified for the ministry, because he says that he divorced Israel, and she is not my wife. In chapter 2, verse 2. Alright, so... uh, Back in Romans chapter 9. I will call them my people which were not my people, and her beloved which was not beloved. And it shall come to pass, that in the place where it was said unto them, Ye are not my people, there shall they be called the children of the living God. Now here it says, children of the living God. uh, But back in Hosea it says, that You shall be called the sons of God. And if you look, similar wording in the beginning of early verses of chapter 9, down in verse uh, 8, that is, they which are the children of the flesh, these are not the children of God, but the children of the promise are counted for the seed. So whoever is counted for the seed are the children of God, specifically the children of the living God, which according to verses 25 and 26, is the nation of Israel and the nation of Judah together, After the flesh. Now that obviously hasn't happened yet. Because right now we're still floating around in verse 6. They're not all Israel which are of Israel. And in verse 3. For I could wish that myself were a curse from Christ. For my brethren and my kinsmen according to the flesh. But don't forget Gentile Christian. Don't forget. 
that the, the adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the service of God, the promises, in Jesus Christ, verse 5, all pertain to Israel. And so God's going to restore them. Amen. Alright, look at verse 27. Isaiah also crieth concerning Israel. So, same thing. You see, Isaiah also, then you should go back and look at Isaiah and see what he said, and all the verses that surround it. Though the number of the children of Israel be as the sand of the sea, a remnant shall be saved. And notice that verse 28 is part of the same sentence, for he will finish the work and cut it short in righteousness, because a short work will he make upon the earth. And verse 28 is the key to understanding when this happens. It says a remnant shall be saved, but when is that going to happen? When he finishes the work and cuts it short in righteousness, because a short work will the Lord make upon the earth. Now we're going to look in a minute about what that short work is and when it happens. But first, I want you to notice in verse 27 that there are two groups uh, that have to do with Israel in verse 27. First is the larger group of all Israel, though the number of the children of Israel be as the sand of the sea. See? Though the number of the children of Israel be as the sand of the sea. We're talking about this innumerable company of people. Uh, if, if, if you can count the stars in the sky for multitude, so shall thy seed be. And here, here it's quoting the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea. So you go on the beach, uh, you look at those little granules of sand, you pick up a handful of them and see if you can count. You probably got a thousand or more in your hand. And you think of all the sand that is in the sea and of the sea, that is on every beach in the whole world, that is under the water, uh, and that is on mountaintops, because there was a time where the whole earth was underwater. And you count every granule of sand and that exists, and that's what the number of the children of Israel is, which is to say you can't count them. There's so many. But he says a remnant shall be saved. Now, a remnant doesn't necessarily mean the whole group. Now, I know about chapter 11. Uh, well, I know the words of chapter 11, and we'll get to what that, we'll get to that when we get to chapter 11, but right now, I'm talking to you about what is being said in verse 27, uh, and the verse that is quoted from. So, a couple things. There's, uh, the whole group of all Israel after the flesh. There's a remnant shall be saved. And verse 28, for he will finish the work and cut it short in righteousness, because a short work will the Lord make upon the earth. And that's when they will be saved. Um, Alright, so keep your finger here and turn to, also, um, Israel after the flesh and the children of promise, uh, just for your own notes, cross-reference Romans chapter 4 and Galatians chapter 3, if you want to review that uh, on your own. But keep your finger here in verse 27 and look down in, look back in, uh, Isaiah chapter 10. It says, Isaiah also cried concerning Israel. So look in Isaiah. Let's look in Isaiah and see what Isaiah had to say. Notice he cried. He crieth concerning Israel. See? So when you're driving in the car and you're listening to the Bible Broadcasting Network or the Fundamental Broadcasting Network or whatever apostate, milky, uh, ridiculously unbiblical, uh, bad preaching, new versions, uh, kind of Christian, quasi-Christian radio station that you might be listening to when you're driving down in the car, and you hear somebody uh, quote a Bible verse like James 4.4, 4, uh, like so, uh, know ye not that he that is a friend of the world is an enemy with God? Or, uh, or like this verse, for he will finish the work and cut it short in righteousness, because a short work will the Lord make upon the earth. Notice, he didn't say it softly. He didn't say it, uh, quietly. It said he crieth, uh, concerning Israel. Notice also, uh, chapter 10, verse 20, but Isaiah is very bold and saith. I was found of them that sought me not, I was made manifest unto them that asked not after me. Oh, which, by the way, that has to do with Gentiles. Uh, but this here in verse 27, 
we're talking about Israel because it says, Isaiah also crieth concerning Israel. So lest you get confused about Israel and the, and the Gentiles and start plugging the Gentiles into all the things that pertain to Israel, you can just remember that God ain't talking about you here. He's talking about the nation of Israel in verse 27, which is very clearly understood by the words concerning Israel in verse 27. Now see that essential Bible, see that little nugget of Bible study that I just gave you? When he says concerning Israel, that means he's talking about Israel. Not you, Christian. Though the number of the children of Israel be as the sand of the sea, a remnant shall be saved. For he will finish the work and cut it short in righteousness. Because a short work will the Lord make upon the earth. Alright, Isaiah uh, chapter 10. First of the major prophets, Isaiah, Jeremiah. Uh, so Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon, Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 10. And look down in verse uh, 20. And it shall come to pass in that day that the remnant of Israel... So in case you're worried about remnant, what remnant is, uh, this is what we're about to have explained to us. Uh, just open, open you up a King James Bible, follow the instructions, go to the verse where it points you to, uh, compare spiritual things with spiritual, and you'll get the answer for long. Amen. Nothing like a King James Bible to clear up a Bible college, edu- a so-called Bible college education. Nothing like a King James Bible to clear up 65 years of the NEA and the and the the National Education Association uh, and public education. Nothing like a King James Bible to clear up the last 200 years of the news media and the crap that's been coming out of their mouth, which is now the de facto standard for for absolute truth in the world. Alright, Isaiah chapter 10, verse 20. And it shall come to pass in that day, which it's not the truth, by the way, but it, they, they have defined it and claimed it as truth. Isaiah chapter 10, verse 20. This is the truth. And it shall come to pass in that day that the remnant of Israel, and such as are escaped of the house of Jacob, shall no more again, which, uh, Obviously, people being killed in the tribulation and burned with fire. Um, back in verse 16 and, and other things. And beheaded in the book of Revelation and all those things. So some are escaped that. The remnant of Israel and such as are escaped the house of, of the house of Jacob shall no more again stay upon him that smote them. That's the Antichrist. But shall stay upon the Lord, the Holy One of Israel, in truth. Which that's important. Not feigned, not in lip service, and not fake. But in truth, the remnant shall return, even the remnant of Jacob, unto the mighty God. For though thy people Israel be as the sand of the sea, yet a remnant of them shall return. The consumption decreed shall overflow with righteousness. For the Lord God of hosts shall make a consumption even determined in the midst of all the land. So consumption... He's going to consume the earth uh, with his wrath. Uh, the Bible talks about treading out the wine press of the wrath of Almighty God in the book of Revelation. Where he's just stomping the grapes with his feet and they're just being crushed and the blood's going everywhere. Um, blood running high as a horse's bridle talks about in the book of Revelation. And forgive me, there's all this I'm just I'm just giving you a brief overview summary of of this subject and i'm not going into a lot of detail just the little amount of detail that we see in these verses um, that are quoted in romans 9 uh, because it's just an introduction and an overview to the subject of god restoring israel at the second advent which we will return to in more detail uh, as its own subject so be patient god help me uh, we'll get to it but a remnant shall be saved And this short work that he's talking about has to do with this consumption of God consuming the earth in righteousness. Alright, now uh, turn over to Isaiah 28. Isaiah 28, and we'll look at this short work. Also quoted from Isaiah. 
Isaiah 28, and look down in verse uh, uh, 21. Actually, start in verse 18. And your covenant with death shall be disannulled, and your agreement with hell shall not stand. When the overflowing scourge shall pass through, then you shall be trodden down by it. See, that's that consumption of uh, that we just read about. From the time that it goeth forth, it shall take you. From morning by morning shall it pass over, by night and by night, by day and by night, and it shall be a vexation only to understand the report. See, you're going to have a hard time just to hear about these things that are happening in the world, and it's going to be so vexing to hear about it, even hear about it. Uh, Never mind what actually happens to you. Verse 20, For the bed is shorter than a man can stretch himself on it, and the covering narrower than he can wrap himself in it. See? So you know how annoying and vexing it is to lay on a on an air mattress that's shorter than you are and your feet hang off the end? And you got a blanket, but it won't cover your whole body, so you cover your, your torso and, and your loins, but it won't cover your feet, so your feet are cold all night? Just that annoyance... Like, uh, that vexation, like, like, like Chinese water torture or something. For the Lord shall rise up as in Mount Perizim. He shall be wroth as in the valley of Gibeon. So these are examples of his wrath and his rising up that have already happened. That he may do his work, his strange work, and bring to pass his act, his strange act. Now therefore, be ye not mockers, lest your bands be made strong. For I I have heard from the Lord God of hosts a consumption, even determined upon the whole earth. See, that's that same consumption that we just read about in Isaiah 10. The short work uh, that he will do upon the earth. He will cut it short in righteousness. Don't worry. There's a time coming where every crooked path shall be made straight. There's a time coming where, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints to execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed and of all their hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. So you just keep talking. Uh, there, atheist. You just keep talking there, philosopher. You just keep talking there, Bertram Russell. You just keep talking there, high school science teacher. You just keep shooting your filthy mouth off, you former Catholic who won't believe in Christ or believe the Bible. You just keep talking. Because every crooked path will be made straight. But according to the Bible, according to the standard of absolute truth, there is a way uh, to escape. Amen. Uh, he says in verse 29, back in Romans chapter 9, As Isaiah said before, except the Lord of Sabbath had left us a seed, we had been a Sodoma and been made like unto Gomorrah. So unless the Lord left us this seed, which is the remnant which shall return, which doctrinally and historically and prophetically is this remnant that returns uh, during the tribulation. A remnant shall be saved, he says in verse 27. So a remnant shall be saved uh, during the tribulation at his coming when he does this short work at the end of the tribulation. Uh, But that doesn't mean, and and also, uh, verse 30, which is 30 through 33, which is an, an overview and a summary of the whole chapter. What shall we say then? That the Gentiles, which followed not after righteousness, have attained to righteousness, not because they're righteous, but even the righteousness which is of faith. See? But because of him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. So there's the righteousness uh, which is of the law, uh, verse 5, for Moses, uh, chapter 10, verse 5, for Moses described the righteousness which is the law, that the man which doeth those things shall live by them. Which we read about in Romans chapter 3, that in this age, by the works of the law, shall no flesh be justified in his sight. And then we have this new thing, uh, which is said here at the end of verse 30, 
even the righteousness which is of faith, see, but Israel, that's Israel after the flesh, which followed after the law of righteousness, see, they did this, uh, or tried to follow this righteousness which is of the law, that the man which doeth those things shall live by them, not very successfully, because of the end of the verse, hath not attained to the law of righteousness, wherefore, why didn't they attain to it? Because they sought it not by faith, but as it were by the works of the law, for they stumbled at that stumbling stone. As it is written, Behold, I lay in Zion a stumbling stone and rock of offense, and whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. So that's a verse uh, that is written in the book of Psalms that Jesus Christ quoted and applied to himself as being the rock of offense and the stumbling block in Zion. And notice the words, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. So the plan all along was for you to believe on Christ. The plan of salvation in the Old Testament was to mix your works with faith. Uh, because the Bible says here in verse in chapter 10, verse 5, uh, The man which doeth those things shall live by them. And again, in Galatians, turn to, keep your finger here and turn to Galatians 3. Galatians 3, and look down in verse uh, 10. For as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse, for it is written, Curse is every one that continueth not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. So you got to keep the law, if you're under the law. But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God, it is evident, for the just shall live by faith. See? The just shall live by faith, and again, whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. And the law is not of faith, but the man that doeth them shall live in them. So under the law, you have verse 11, which is faith, and you have verse 12, which is works. See, both of those things together combined, you have to have the kind of faith from James chapter 2, which is proven by your work. You have to have the kind of faith from Hebrews chapter 11, which is proven by your obedience to the command and the word of God, specifically for you. Not the same general plan that applies to everybody, but whatever it is that God told you what to do. Uh, by faith Noah, being moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house. By faith Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season, for he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. By faith, uh, I'm not going in the right order of the verses, but by faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, he said. See, what is that? That is faith plus works. That is believing in God enough to stand up against Goliath. That's having enough faith in the true and the living God, uh, to stand up against a guy four or five times your height and build when you're a 15-year-old kid with uh, mosquito bites for biceps on your arms. Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. See? So, we have the blessing of Abraham in that we receive the promise of the Spirit by faith, not by works, even though they had to get it by faith plus works. But according to Romans chapter 9, they tried to get it by works without faith. I realize that's kind of a mouthful. I hope you've got that. Uh, they followed after the law of righteousness, but they sought it not by faith. So when Jesus Christ came along and said, um, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth on him should not perish but have everlasting life, they scoffed at it and mocked it. Uh, that is to say, they stumbled at that stumbling stone. And uh, in verse 32... Uh, because they didn't have the faith to believe him because they were too busy working. See? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. 
And uh, I want you to notice a couple things before we leave chapter 9, is that even though we're talking about general groups here, the, the nation of Israel versus the Gentiles as a group, and it says that the Gentiles have attained to righteousness, does that mean every Gentile in the world is saved? No. Not by a long shot. And it says Israel has not attained to the law of righteousness. Does that mean none of them are saved? No. It means God was dealing with the Jews and did all these things and promised these things to the Jews and pertained to the Jews and the adoption um, with all these things um, in his dealing with nations and groups of people and the Jews, because they sought it not by faith, not because you're better, Gentile, uh, not because you're better, but because they sought it not by faith, now he's given you uh, the ability to believe on him through faith. But God hath command, but now hath commanded all men everywhere to repent, the Bible says. And if you look in uh, chapter 10, down in verse uh, 16, But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah saith, Lord, who hath believed our report? Isaiah didn't see anybody believing. <laughs> who hath believed? Uh, so then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Uh, back from verses 14 and 15, which we'll cover in a couple weeks. But I say, have they not heard? Yes, verily, their sound went into all the earth, and their words into the ends of the world. So the answer to have they not heard, that is to say Israel as well as the Gentiles, Paul says, yes, they've heard. Well, what about the Jews? Verse 19, but I say, did not Israel know? First Moses saith, I will provoke you to jealousy by them that are no people, and by a foolish nation I will anger you. That's you, Gentile, lest you be high-minded and wise in your own conceits. What you are is no people and a foolish nation, and not a nation. <laughs> verse 20 but Isaiah is very bold and saith I was found of them that sought me not. not I was found of them that sought me not he crieth concerning Israel and here he was very bold I was found of them that sought me not I was made manifest unto them that asked not after so you weren't seeking God and you weren't asking after him but he revealed himself to you but to Israel he saith all day long have I stretched forth my I stretched forth my hands unto a disobedient and gainsaying people. See, and then we're going to deal in chapter uh, eleven uh, about uh, God restoring Israel. Amen. So there's this thing called the times of the Gentiles and the fullness of the Gentiles, which is this period of time where God has turned. Uh, from relationship with Israel and dealing with uh, Gentiles in the church age. And that's this uh, Gentiles have attained to righteousness, even the righteousness which is of faith in chapter 9, verse 30. But not Israel. But that doesn't mean that some of them didn't get saved, praise the Lord, which is the Israel which is of God from Galatians 6. And I, I know there was, I kind of covered a lot of different things there. Hopefully it was simple and clear enough. If not, you can call me or write me or ask me a question. I'd be happy to, to, uh, answer any specific question that you have. But, uh, before we leave chapter 9, I just want you to remember, uh, Gentile, that just because you've attained to the righteousness which is by faith, Uh, look in verse, chapter 11, in verse, uh, uh, let's see. Verse 12, no, if the, well, uh, verse, uh, 18. Boast not against the branches, but if thou boast, thou bearest not the root, but the root thee. Thou wilt say then, the branches were broken off, that I might be grabbed in. That's replacement theology. That's you thinking that you took the place of Israel, that you deserve to be here because they lost their chance by being disobedient. And that ain't so, if you keep reading. Well, because of unbelief they were broken off. See, unbelief. They sought it not by faith. And thou standest by faith. Be not high-minded, but fear. 
For if God spared not the natural branches, take heed lest he also spare not thee. See? He's addressing Gentiles. He said, I speak to you Gentiles, being the apostle of the Gentiles. I magnify mine office, back in verse 13. He's talking to you Gentiles, and he's saying to you, don't think more highly of yourself than you ought to, because just like God's wrath has been poured out on the Jews for the last 2,000 years, and, uh, and God has let you in, has grafted you into their tree, which wasn't even your tree, so he will also turn again his attention to them and restore them and turn away from you as a group. Notice this is not individuals that he's addressing, but the group as a whole. Uh, times of the Gentiles and the fullness of the Gentiles. What that uh, chapter 11, verses 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. Um, so you can look at that uh, later. Um, I know I didn't do that justice. I know I covered a couple different topics. The Tribulation, the Second Advent. Um, That's Romans 12. Uh, um, I'm just trying to give you an overview and a meaning of the and what the flow of what Paul is saying um, in Romans chapter 9, 10, 11. And then we will swing back as the Lord leads and cover each of these topics in more detail. Um, amen? Because the Bible has a lot to say about the second coming of Jesus Christ. And he has a lot to say about restoring Israel. Alright then. Uh, let's uh, close in a word of prayer and then we'll take a break uh, before the main service. Dear God, we thank you so much for your many blessings. Thank you for restoring Israel and that they're beloved for the Father's sake. And I pray that you help us to have a burden for Israel and to preach to them and to minister to them carnal things and all the things the Bible says concerning them. Uh, give us a safe trip today. And give us a good service. If anybody uh, hearing this message or anybody in general uh, isn't saved, help them to get saved, Lord. Help them to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Help them to look and see your dealing with people, with Israel, the nation of Israel, by blessing the blessing and cursing that curse thee, and with the Gentiles, and to be overwhelmed with the mercy that God has showed us, and call upon the name of the Lord to be saved, believing that he's raised him from the dead. It's in Jesus Christ's name I pray. Amen. Amen.